Well, God bless you. God bless you. And God bless you one more time. Rev Eddie here. <laughs> oh, I just thank God for each and every one of you. I thank God for another day we get to spend together diving in his word, getting his wisdom, his knowledge, his understanding. Amen. In our search for truth. Glory, glory, glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. I thank God for each and every one of you that have been praying for this ministry. We had a lovely, lovely fourth fourth meeting in our church, a, a church service yesterday that the Holy Spirit just filled the place and had his way because he lives ministry in power. For God's people, amen. Thank you for praying for us. Let me give a shout out to all of you. Oh, and Anna joined us at the end of our service and got to meet uh, through messenger video. She got to meet some of our church family that was still there, amen. She got to meet Gail and Tex and Scott and Carolyn and myself. She knew me, but I'm saying... <laughs> She got to see him, and they got to see her, and we made a prayer circle, and she, oh, that girl prayed for us, and we prayed for her, amen. We had ourselves a good time, amen. Anyway, God bless all of you who are following us on YouTube. I thank God for each and every one of you, and all of you on Facebook, my Facebook family, friends, relatives. And loved ones, thank God for each and every one of you. And I thank you for your prayers. And we're all praying together for each other. And God is moving. Miracles happening all over this world. Amen. And so uh, let's just keep it going. Amen. If you're on YouTube and you'd like some private prayer, you just want to reach out to me and, you know, talk uh, personally. Find me on Facebook, Rev Eddie, one word, no space, no dash, no dot, Rev Eddie Wiggins on Facebook. Message me, and we can exchange numbers, and we can chat it out and talk it out and pray it out and cry it out and shout it out, knowing in our hearts God is going to work it out. Amen? And so... I've got a favorite island. Do you guys know where that island is? It's the island of Mindanao in the Philippines. I can't wait to get back. Oh, I love that hot weather. It's hot at night. The water's 80 degrees 24-7. It's just so beautifully blessed by God. And the beautiful people. Of Mindanao, that's what just makes it so wonderful and beautiful. And especially there in Dipalog City where I've ministered, I just thank God for each and every one of you. And Joe Ryan, our favorite DJ, pumping this podcast into the hearts and minds and souls and spirits of all of those in Polanco and over there in Dipalog and those surrounding villages and cities. Amen. All the way up into the mountains. Thank you, Joe. And God bless you for your heart and your work and your effort to get the word of God through the airways into the hearts of God's people. Thank you, Joe. And uh, the one radio station, we got four more we're going for, Joe, that may have this transmitter. And we're looking for them to donate it, everybody. So pray that the Lord would touch the hearts. The one radio station couldn't find the transmitter they thought they had that they would be able to donate to us. So we got four more shots right in that area. Amen. And they are Christian stations. So pray, y'all, that we can get this transmitter so that uh, Joe can have far-reaching effects in his ministry and with his, uh, 
it's business. This is his livelihood. Amen. And so uh, a shout out to Pastor Nelia, who will be coming on. They're working out the details for the spot he's given her to minister to the hearts. As far as I know, she still needs 300 more bricks and counting down, and bags of cement. If you know where any hollow bricks are, she's trying to finish this church for the Lord and uh, be a continued blessing to the people of Dipalog City and those surrounding areas. Amen. Hallelujah. So Anna is just such a valuable, uh, valuable uh uh, part of this body of Christ and she's reaching out uh, Elena she's reaching out for you she couldn't find you on Facebook and I sent her your link so expect a uh, message from Anna and keep Anna lifted up in your prayers along with her son Jacob for a complete restoration and healing in his body and mind and heart and Maddie Keep her lifted up in your prayers. Amen. She's going through, but she's coming out better than she went in. Amen. And Nick and Patrice, we just thank God for them and their prison ministry as they're going behind these walls and bars and uh, razor wire of these institutions. And God is blessing their ministry, men and women prisons. Even death row, they're able to minister to God's beloved behind those bars. And salvation and deliverance is happening every time they go. Amen. So keep Nick and Patrice up in your prayers. Coach Gecker and his wife, Dr. K, and all their family, relatives, and loved ones. He's my spiritual mentor. Amen. Every pastor needs a pastor. Amen. And so keep them lifted up in your prayers. Laura Boland, keep her lifted up in your prayers. Donna, oh, what a, what a, what a war she's been going through, but she's still here and still fighting. And her two sons, amen, keep them lifted up in your prayers. Harvey Carey and his wife, Rosie, Anthony, and... Jamal on the ground, warriors for Jesus on those beautiful streets of Atlanta, Georgia. Keep them lifted up in your prayers. Elena Vasquez and her son, Nelly Vasquez, complete healing and deliverance and restoration in her son, Nelly. Miracles from heaven coming your way. Just know it. And let's keep them up in their prayers. Rod isn't with us now, but is supposed to join us. Amen. And we're going to be answering some questions today from Elena, Elena and uh, Ladera. Amen. So uh, uh, keep Rod and his grandmother, 97 years young, former Bible teacher for the kids. Amen. I got all her books right here on this bookshelf. Amen. Uh, she donated them to this ministry years ago. And we just thank God for her work for God's kingdom all those years. And Grandma Naomi, hey, hey, God bless you. And we thank God for you. Amen. And pray for my sisters, my real sisters, Jan and Karen. I just love them to death. Amen. And uh, keep them lifted up in your prayers. Sarah the paramedic and uh, Captain Haynes, keep them up in your prayers. And Pastor Jody. And we've got Dorothy and her dad and family and Lee and patience is what they're looking for. Amen. And Scott and Carolyn. I mean, Scott wears many hats. He's got a gift of healing since he was nine years old. So he's a doctor, and he's been healing people for 40 years. Amen? And so he's got his doctor hat. We call him Dr. Scott. But he's the assistant pastor of this church. So we call him Pastor Scott. And 
He's the founder, him and his wife, Carolyn, are founders of this ministry. Amen. So he got all kind of hats, and we just love them both to death. They got eight kids. Keep them lifted up in your prayers. Amen. And don't think they're not going through a battle. They are. That's why we need you to pray for them. Pray for this ministry, especially Sarah, their daughter, and their grandbaby, Sarah's daughter, Summer. Keep them lifted up in your prayers. Amen. And Keith and Jay Clark and Cheyenne and Helena Gore and Ladera and her entire family, they're going through. But they're coming out better than they went in. Amen. And Evangelist Tammy and her ministry, Looking for Lost Souls. And Ashley and her daughter and family. And Lucia and Sasha, who are so dear to our heart. Uh, keep them lifted up in your prayers. April and her children, Dominique Moore and Billy Moore, the Thunder Twins, and Tim, Pastor Tim, you know him. And, uh, oh, he's going to do a video today. He's going to do a podcast today. We can't wait to see what God has put on his heart. Amen. Now, he's switching over to Rumble. He's catching it up there on YouTube. So, as he speaks the truth, amen, let's just keep him up in his prayer, in our prayers. His wife, Heather, and his two children, uh, uh, Haley and Jaden, keep them lifted up in your prayers, amen. And don't forget Christina with a K down there in uh, Mississippi, Mississippi, amen, and the work she's doing for God's kingdom. Uh, God has just truly blessed her, and we love her to death. Amen. And E.S., amen. Glory to God. Keep E.S. lifted up in your prayers. Charlotte and Dale doing a thing down under. I mean, we got so much attention from Australia. We're just loving it. We got to get over there and play with some, box with some uh, kangaroos and whatever other critters you guys have over there. Anna told me they don't have no rattlesnakes. Somebody did. I'm like, okay, and coyotes, they don't have those. But we don't have kangaroos over here. Amen. But they are just doing a thing for the Lord, on fire for the Lord, and we thank God for them. And they have an event, Charlotte and Dale. Okay, and we want to pray for prayer pray for this meeting on Tuesday. It's called Anzac. A-N-Z-A-C. No idea what that is, but if it's on her heart, it's on our heart. Amen. And so let's keep this meeting up in prayer that uh, Dale and uh, Charlotte have uh, put on our plate of prayer. Amen. And uh, Minister Deborah Atwell, we've been chatting. She's down there in the Bahamas on fire looking for the lost. Amen. And that's what Jesus was doing on that cross, making a way for the lost. We were all lost. Amen. And that's the mission. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Okay. And we have Tim Clayton, Nancy Bullock, and Stephanie Deffer we're praying for. And they are healed from this diagnosis of cancer. Healed in the mighty name of Jesus. Kyla, bless her heart down under. She's feeling and rocking and rolling in your prayers, okay? Uh, and the Lord is really using her. And uh, prayers are being answered. So let's just keep praying for each other and let these miracles come forth, amen? We all need a miracle. Uh, Wang Gui in in Melbourne, Australia. Now, she is a female. I remember now. Amen. So let's pray for her. Keep her lifted up in our prayers. Angelica Lewis, also down under. Amen. And I've known her for years. Let's keep her lifted up in prayer. And Zarlia, our 18-month-old baby who just went through brain surgery last week. We haven't heard anything back but we're praying for a miraculous and speedy recovery. In Jesus' name, uh, this tumor and stuff, 
never to return in Jesus' name. Amen. And Jesse from YouTube and Laura and Laura from YouTube. She's got a daughter, Micah. Let's keep Micah as she goes through this troubling trial, okay, that she will come out better than she went in. Amen. And we have Jean, and uh, she had an issues with tumors, and the Lord told me, uh-uh, she's healed. <laughs> she's healed. Amen. And so let's keep her lifted up in prayer. And Ken, who recently lost his daughter, I mean, uh, heartbreaking. Keep him up in prayer as he's drawing closer to the Lord, getting his walk tighter with the Lord. Amen. Well, glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The kids are excited. Are you guys excited? Can, can we go into God's word today? Amen. Let's get there. And we're going to do this and at the same time answer a question from Ladera. And we didn't quite get it last time as she was talking about uh, abortion uh, from rape. Okay, How, what is our stand on abortion, right, when dealing with uh, a rape or incest? Amen? And that's deep. I've got to admit, that's deep, okay? What does a woman do? Now, I explained last time how we were dealing with a young lady over in the Philippines, okay, who was raped, and she kept that baby and raised that baby, and we built them a house so that that family could be safe. Amen? But that there takes a special heart. I have trouble in my heart that a young girl could be raped or even by a family member, a father, perhaps, having incest with this child. That, that, that is abuse, ab beyond abuse, you see. Now, I'm going to bring a scripture of how it should be. But that's not what's happening. And from a biblical point of view, are we allowed, because that would be a hate crime <laughs> by all means. That's a demonic crime. In every sense of the word, demonic. For a person to get to a place in their minds, in their hearts, that this type of activity would be okay, that they would even wrap their minds around the thought to do such horror, I have trouble comprehending. You see, my heart, I, it's hard for me to wrap my mind around that horrible act, how someone could get to that place, you see? But let's dive into this word. The Lord led me to Ephesians chapter 5, and I'm going to start at verse 21, and I'm reading out of the New Living Translation for your ease. Now, this is how it ought to be. This is God's nature. And his nature is in all creation, including us. I mean, it's in the rocks, it's in the solar systems, it's in the seas. He's perfect. And his nature is perfect. And as he creates, his nature goes into his creation. However, in a sinful world that's broken and dark and evil, 
where the demons and the devil reigns, and people attach themselves to these sinful pleasures. You see, that's not the nature of God. And that's why you see the horror instead of God's perfection. It's the choices that man and woman make when they decide to attach themselves to evil. And then the byproduct of that is the horror that they bring forth, not only in their lives, but it affects other lives. Amen? But here's how in God's perfect creation and God's perfect plan and God's nature, his perfect nature, his character, this is how it ought be. So Ephesians 5, verse 21 states, and further, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. So we shouldn't even be in relationship without Christ. And that's what you're seeing in this broken, dark, sin sick world where evil is just everywhere and why you see so much divorce. There's no love in them. So they're constantly fighting and terrorizing and the kids are damaged and abused. The wives are abused, you see, because of the very first sentence. For wives, this means submit to your husband as to the Lord. They can't. This man don't know the Lord. They don't trust this man. No woman is going to submit to an idiot. Can I say that? I mean, is that okay? Are we going to get in trouble for that? No woman is going to submit to a man that she doesn't trust with her life. Now, you look at the condition of these men in this society here today. They're sitting on couches while she's at work playing with their Game Boy. They're not providing. They could care less. They're smoking blunts and drinking 40s and got their friends coming over, but they call themselves married. In my mind, that's an idiot. That's not what a man is called to do. A woman is looking for security. That man needs to have a job, a way to support her, a way to provide for the family. That's a man, a real man. And a man with the love of God in his heart, oh, that becomes a real man. A man that will grab her hand and they both hit their knees and pray and keep that marriage glued to Jesus. Now that's a man. That's a man she'll be willing to submit to, a man that'll pour his heart and his concern into her life. You see what I'm saying? That's a real man. But family values they seem <laughs> to be a thing of the past. What's coming up out of this society, of this evil world today, it's heartbreaking. And when two of these enter into marriage, my God, the children suffer, the wife suffers, the man suffers. It's suffering. That's not what God intended. Let's see what God intended by going further in this scripture. Amen? For a husband is the head of his wife, as Christ is the head of the church. So that means they become a team and they're working together for their common goals, what they've decided they'd like to have and reach as a couple and as a family. You see, whether it be in business, uh, whether it be at their church, whether it's in their community, whatever they've decided that they as a power couple want to enter into, they're a team, and they're doing it together. A, man, a woman's not going to submit to a man unless that 
submission is mutual. He's got to submit to her as much as he wants her to submit to him. This is not one-sided. Don't get it twisted like the kids say. <laughs> Amen? So he's got to be submitted to her as she submits to him. Otherwise, it's not safe. She's not no doormat. She's not something to be run over. She's not a slave. You lost your rabbit mind. <laughs> when God made woman, he took her. He put that boy to sleep, first of all. I don't need your input as to how to create a woman. And he took that rib of Adam. He didn't take a toe bone for you to walk over her. He took a rib so she can stand next to you side by side, equal to you in God's sight. So equal is the man and woman that God sees a marriage. They become one. Amen? And it's hard to find that oneness in relationships today because everybody's out for themselves. Let's continue in this word, though, okay? It says, as the church submits to Christ, so you wives should submit to your husbands in everything. But that's because they're one, and they're on one accord, and she sees that in this man. And she can submit to this. So, man, we really got to pull it together here. Amen? Verse 25, for husbands, this means love your wives just as Christ loved the church. Now, that's an incredible love. You got to love her with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your body. You got to be there for her. Totally and complete. It's not boys' night six days a week. Have you lost your mind? But we see that today. He's never home. He's never there. He's never pouring into her as she's trying to pour in to him. You see? And so you get this brokenness in what could be oneness. And you wonder why you're fighting all the time. You see? You're not treating her like Jesus loves the church so much he died. The first church service was Golgotha. The cross. That was the first sermon. As he ushered in his church. It's not our church. It's his church. Are you with me? Women need a good man. They dream of a good man. They love romance. They love a romantic man. But you don't have time to do that. Well, I'm not romantic. Well, you better get romantic if you want to keep her. Because there'll be another man that could romance her and she'll be gone. And you'll lose that. Amen? Amen. They dream as little girls of this knight in shining armor that they can live with and live happily ever after. Can you step up and be that? Can you be there for her? Can you be that rock that she can hang on to? Because I'm going to tell you another side of the coin. You see these men and you say, now that's a great man. But behind every great man is an even greater woman holding him up, okay? Baby, I don't want to go out there today. You got to go out there today, baby. They need you. Now, here, I've picked out your clothes. I've got them all laid out on the bed. Just get dressed. I'll go with you, and I'll give you that pep talk all the way there, but you got to be all you can be. You see, you don't see that side of the man. She does. 
But she makes sure you don't see that side of her man because she want her man out there and doing all and being all he can be for whatever it is, whether it's his job, whether it's uh, lecturing or teaching or preaching or whatever. You see, she wants her man to be the best because that's her man. <laughs> okay? But what do you want, guy? You want to be left alone. You want to go play pool with the buddies. You want to have a bingo night and poker night and drinking night and all these other nights. Well, then you should have never got married because that's not what she's looking for. How are you going to be there for your family? How are you going to protect your family? That's what they need from you as a man. Protection. And they shouldn't have to have protection from you, the husband and father, as you abuse those kids and abuse your wife. Now they need protection. But from you? No. Christ protects the church because he loves the church. Amen? Here comes Rod right now. Let's get him in here. Well, good morning, and God bless you, Rod. Well, praise the Lord for today, Reverend Brother Eddie. God bless you, too. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and welcome. And, oh, there's been so many questions. They want to know what happened to your truck. I told, I told him it was damaged beyond repair. It went over a My cliff. Truck. And, yeah. Oh, the Lord, the Lord has blessed us so much harder than that. Yeah, it was 10 dollars. 10 years ago, this 4th of July. And God's been working so strong in your life since then. Yeah. Forget yeah, about the truck. <laughs> who cares well, about the truck, remember, right? Re remember who delivered me out of that, yeah. out of those circumstances. Actually, remember who created those circumstances only for me to be delivered by his hands out of it. Yeah. Okay, so here's where fun. we're at now. I'm in well, Ephesians yeah. chapter 5, 21, answering Ladera's question about men's abuse and raping and uh, uh, incest of their wives and uh, children and the horror that goes on beside, behind closed doors. So what I'm reading is how it should be. How I'm sharing is what God, has declared is a true marriage and how fathers and uh, husbands should be acting. And we are talking about where, you know, what we are seeing and the horrors that they cause, but it's demonic and it's against the nature of God. A man's hand, let me say this, Rob, now that we got you with us, and then you can spill your heart as I bring forth the rest of this. A man's hands are not to do harm to his children or his wife. But with his hands, he can caress, he can comfort, he can lift them up when they fall, he can embrace them, but never ever should they fear the hands of their husbands or fathers. They should be gentle in nature, protective. Oh, heck yeah. Them hands are boxed and do damage. You try to get at my wife, my daughter. But my hands are a place of safety for my wife and family. Amen. Let me show you where we're at in Scripture. As the church submits to Christ, so you wives should submit to your husbands and everything. And I told them that. Submission is mutual. She ain't submitting it to no man she can't trust, you know, that don't have her best interest in mind. And if he submitted to her, obviously she feels safe to submit to him. So verse 25 says, For husbands, this means love your wives just as Christ loved the church. And he died for that church. Okay, he gave everything for this church and he gifts the church with his Holy Spirit. So he's always feeding and nurturing and growing his church. He gave up his life for her to make her holy and clean 
washed by the cleansing of God's word. And I would say a family that's not reading this word together is separated from this very thing, being made holy and clean and washed by the cleansing of God's word. He did this to present her, the church, to himself as a glorious church without spot or wrinkle or any other blemish. Instead, she will be holy and without fault. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as they love their own body. For a man who loves his wife actually shows love for himself. No one hates his own body but feeds and cares for it, just as Christ cares for the church, and we are members of his body. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So I'm praying that we were able to answer Ladera's questions. Why you're seeing incest, why you're seeing rape is demonic. It goes against God's word. It goes against his character. It goes against his creation and his nature in creation. You've gone astray. You see? And the only way to get that far out to where you could commit a horrible, horrible, horrible crime against another uh, family member or loved one, supposed loved one, it's demonic. It is absolutely demonic. I can't even wrap my head around somebody who could even think that it's okay, to, uh, a man that thinks it's okay to rape a woman. Or uh, a family member thinking that it's okay to commit incest. I can't wrap my head around it. How do you get okay. there in thought to even think well, well, about doing such stuck. a crime? Let's not, get, let's not get stuck there. Let's move forward. We're getting bogged down in the mud. Well, and we're answering a question, Rob, well, from one of question. our body answer of crime. Right. Answer the question and move forward. I do believe we have. So our second question comes from Elena. And Elena wants to know what we think about the age of accountability. Amen. And I had it in Matthew, and now I can't find my bookmark. Here you go to Genesis for that one, pal. <laughs> the, the snake, the snake and the tree. Go to Genesis. <laughs> okay, talk a little louder so you can take us there while I look for what go to Genesis. I've already marked. And I'm looking for my little bookmark. I had this all mapped out. And over what in you Matthew. Say, you say some of our plans the other day, how you plan scriptures, and all of a sudden, boop, the yep. plans be changed. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sounds like them plans. Sounds like them plans been changed, Reverend Brother. Well, give us a testimony for our past while I find this. Because I tell you. I got it. I got her here. Yeah, I see my book mount. It fell out. I had a little sticky thing in there, but it's not sticking. <laughs> so give us a yeah. testimony while I refine that. Mm -hmm. They love hearing about our past, our adventures. Oh. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll tell you. Uh, first of all, uh, Whatever situation you got, turn to the Lord for your answer. Turn to the turn Lord. To, uh, Lost you there. For your answer. Mm hmm Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Elena, I found where I wanted to go in Scripture before I answer that. And I just... It's on it. There's, it's good. This is out of Matthew, and it's chapter 18. And we're going to verse 2. 
Okay. Now, one, verse one is stating, let's go to verse one so we can climb into this. About that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? So Jesus called, verse 2, a little child to him and put the child among them. Then he said, I tell you the truth, unless you turn from your sins and become like little children, you will never get into the kingdom of heaven. In other words, you're trying to figure out who will be the greatest. You haven't even gotten there yet. And I need your faith to catch up. (laughs) Okay? Or you're not getting in. You're arguing about who would be the greatest. And he grabs the child. Boy, I wonder what that child's name is. Because now he's in the arms of Jesus being used as an illustration in front of all these adults. And he's probably all bashful and, you know, hugging on the Lord and, you know, wondering where this is going, but loving it. But yet, Jesus is showing a love for the children in a society where women were hated and children were treated like they were nuisances. And yet Jesus would grab one and show his love. Watch this. Okay. Okay. He said, you will never get into the kingdom of heaven. Verse 4, so anyone who becomes as humble as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And anyone who welcomes a little child like this on my behalf is welcoming me, showing the oneness in his love for these children. He loves the children. That society at that particular time in human history didn't. And even the disciples shooed the mothers away who were bringing their children to to be blessed. And the Lord said, no, 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 no. Let the children come to me. What are you doing? For such as these shall inherit the kingdom of God. And we're answering the question about the age of, of accountability. Let me get through this scripture and I'll give you what the Lord has shared in my heart about this, okay? So he says in verse six, but if you call one of these little ones who trust in me to fall into sin, it would be better. Oh, come on now. It would be better for you to have a large millstone. Millstones weighed about 2,000 pounds. They were big, round rocks with a hole in the center to go on a pole, and the oxen would pull it around the threshing floor and crush the wheat. Amen? It would be better for you to have a large millstone tied around your neck and be drowned in the depths of the sea in other words don't don't harm my kids me and my kids are one you see now he goes on in verse 10 beware that you don't look down on any of these little ones talking about the kids for I tell you that in heaven their angels are always in the presence of my heavenly father So he has placed angels around every child to protect them. Amen? That's how important children are to him. Now, as far as the word is concerned, Elena, and you can chime in any time you want, Rob, there is no stated age of accountability. Now, religions, churches, church folk. I became a reverend in the Baptist church. They said the age of accountability is 12. Why? (laughs) The Bible doesn't say it. Where'd that come from? You see what I'm saying? Now, 
yes, Jesus entered the temple at 12. And in Hebrew culture, you were moving from childhood into adulthood at the age of 12. I had a Bible study for 14 years. Many 12-year-olds grew up in this ministry. I know 12-year-olds. These are not men, <laughs> okay? <laughs> These are children. Now, maybe in your country, 12-year-olds act a little more decent than 12-year-olds do over in America. But these are children. Amen? And so to attach something to them and call it an age of accountability, I'm not feeling it. Many of them growing up in homes we just talked about have been suffering from abuse. There's no Bible in that house. There's no love in their house. They don't even know the Lord. Me, at 12, I'm wondering if there is a God. Now, I want to tell you what makes you accountable. When this gospel is preached to you, and you are given the opportunity to make a choice in your life, that's when you're accountable. What if you're born and live and die at, say, 60 years old and you never heard the gospel? You ne never had the opportunity to choose Jesus. Do you think you're going to burn in hell? No. Not sure where that classroom is. But that gospel will be preached to you after your death then, and then you will make that decision. Everyone has that divine appointment in this life to choose life or to choose death. Amen? And so some of these kids grow up never, ever hearing the gospel. And now they're called adults. But they've still got angels. They're still their souls still belong to God. And if he has to minister that gospel to them himself, he will. I mean, do you think that a baby who dies at birth or saved from an abortion goes to hell? Come on. God grabs each and every one of them. For the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these, he said. So what is that age? where a child has to make this decision. There is no age. You see? Not according to God's word. And when I'm looking for truth, I look here in this word. Amen? And so, I don't know your thoughts on this, Rod. There's children that don't have that are born, that don't have the mental capacity to ever make a decision. They're born with, uh, I, I, I'm not sure what you would want to call it, but they may have learning disabilities or mental disabilities or issues that they will never be able to make that decision. Do you remember Rachel, Rod, over at yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Charlene? Uh, I was asking yeah, Ben. I yeah, I was asking Ben yeah. when we were over there working. So what happens to people? She's 60 years old, but she doesn't have the mental aptitude of a uh, uh, first grade, you know, kindergarten. And he said, she belongs to the Lord. She's just here to draw our love out of us to place into her life. That's one of God's Sweetest special kid. children. She was so sweet. She Wasn't was she so sweet? sweet. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just a real sweetheart. So She would just light up when we would show up. If you were to tell a six-year-old the gospel, can they comprehend it in their little minds? To the point to make a decision then? 
We baptize oh. the children, right, at one years old or, you know, when they're babies. Can they comprehend what's happening? That's why we baptize again when they can make that conscious decision, you see. But some grow and will never be able to make that conscious decision. They belong to the Lord. They're an automatic, you see. They're his. So to state that there is an age, hmm, where do you get that from? Uh, sounds about right, bro. That's, that what, that's my thought. You Did see? I hit that one right out of Wrigley Field? I thought so. But, again, we got church folk that will say, no, by 15, they have to make a decision by Christ. Okay. Who's going to bring them the message? Who's their teacher? Where, who's going to evangelize this love of God into their hearts? What if they never heard it? Then 15 don't work, does it? <laughs> now, in a Christian home, that's a different thing. You see, if you've got children that can uh, be taught, they're in their right minds and uh, uh, able to, to conceive the love of God, then fine. Do it by 12. If that's what God put on your heart, do it by 15. What, you know, be spirit-led. Amen? But as far as the Bible's concerned, we're all here. And even when we grow up and turn into uh, uh, little rebels like I did, you see what I'm saying? We're under grace. And God yeah. is going to reach yeah. out many times yeah. into our lives trying right. to recapture <laughs> mm -hmm. our hearts and minds and souls and bring us into heaven. Tale. Amen? In spite of the fact that you believe that his existence is a fairy tale. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. But that's okay. You tried to bring you tried to bring that lifestyle into a household and was reduced. I tried to bring that my lifestyle, I live for Christ, into what? Into a household and you were rebuked. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Just because we're his like doesn't mean we're going to be accepted, even by family. Mean... Yeah, that's my point. Yeah, even by but family. And what did Jesus say? Right. A prophet's not known in his own home? Hey. He'll be rejected. Hey. In his own home. Hey, and that, that scripture surely manifested itself up there where you was. Yeah. For a year and a half. Now he got you in your, your own home with him, and he recognizes you. Yeah, and I got a new family. I have all of you out there. We're on one accord. Amen. I have this physical church family here. We have our other ministries where we have just fallen in love with each other and help and encourage and strengthen each other, pray for each other. God's got a family if your family rejected you. He's got that's one Mark, waiting. That's, that, that's, Mark, that's Mark 6 and 4. A yep. prophet is not without honor except in his hometown, in his home. Yeah, and among his relatives in his own household. Yeah, but now you got your own household, and trust me, the way he's working things out for you, boy. Thank you, Jesus. You got a stamp. It looks like you got a stamp of approval, bro. This was a miracle. Thank you, Jesus. And I thank Don't God for that? this miracle, and I thank Don't God for the love He's pouring into me in this miracle from this family. You know. I mean, I, I can't wait to finish this podcast, get down back down to that church. We're working to get that Zoom up for this coming Sunday if we can. We're making That's progress, amen. And so if you can't find me at home, I'm at the church, getting it ready for you, amen. And so I'm going to get a hug from Pastor Scott, Dr. Scott today. He's, he's working uh, his gift, healing people. And his wife, Carolyn, I'm going to get a hug from her. And maybe some of them staff will hug me. And if Gail and Tex are down there, uh, maybe for treatment, they'll give me a hug. I get more hugs daily 
than I've gotten in the last year and a half. And we're talking family. <laughs> and I want to hug my family. They just didn't want to hug me, Rob. Amen. But I want, it reminds me of another scripture. He said, you've come. You think I've come to bring peace. Uh-uh. Family will split because of me. Society will split because of me. Friends will depart because of me. Because one of you is going to fall in love with me and the rest of your family is going to go against me. You see, division will, will come because I've come. Because everybody has to make a decision about him. And in the end days, sons will turn against their fathers and daughters against their mothers. It's promised. But you stick to your decision. You see, because this is not our home. And we can't walk the walk for them. And they could really get in your way trying to show them, please them, work with them, and they're hating you and everything you talk and live. You see? So sometimes it's better just get out of the way, climb into your church family and continue on with the Lord and not worry what's happened, you know, back there. Amen. Glory to God. Anything else you want to add before we uh, pray out and close out? Uh, my, uh, my brother just, Rob, just, what's on your heart? Uh, my heart was on my heart, Lord. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the precepts of Psalms 1914, please let the meditation of our hearts and the thoughts of our minds, words from our mouths, be acceptable totally in your presence as we ask you to be with us in this thing you call life. Can you say that now, one more time? A little louder. I, I want to make sure they get that. That's good. Oh, Jesus. Come on. In the precepts of Matthew 18 and 20, here we are in the fellowship. And we're thanking you, Lord. We're thanking you, Jesus. We're thanking you, thanking you, thanking you. We praise you, Lord. We yes, praise Lord. you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. We, we ask that in the precepts of Psalms 1914, that the meditation of our hearts and the thoughts of our mind be totally and wholly acceptable. And the words yeah. of our mouth be acceptable in your presence in our lives, Lord. This we ask in Jesus' name. There's the answer to your question, Ladera. There it is. What we go through, how we live this life, we want it acceptable to God. And the horrors that you witness, they didn't care about their actions, their lives, their words being acceptable to God. But we keep going. Amen? Warriors yeah. for Christ. Everybody yeah. coming out of this ministry will be a warrior for Christ. We will not yeah. bend. We will not break. We will not yeah. shy away. But we will do. What we were created to do. We will not compromise our walk. Not one iota. But we'll be the warriors that Jesus Christ has called us to be in war for these souls. War for this kingdom. War to get in this word. Read your word. Read your word. Read your word. Hallelujah. All right. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and everyone you drew here today. And we ask, Father, by the power, the anointing, the authority that you've placed upon my life and upon this ministry, that healing power will go forth right now. Right now, this anointing go forth. Heal every broken heart, mended back together, Lord. Heal everybody. I don't care what the diagnosis is. Gone in the mighty name of Jesus. Deliverance going forth right now. I don't care what you're addicted to, what lifestyle you're in that you just can't stop. You're knowing that it's displeasing to the Lord and you're wanting it off. Delivered right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Strongholds from the enemy torn down. Yokes broken. Prison doors opened up. Dark places lit up. 
In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. And the church said together, Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for stopping by. We'll be back tomorrow. But until we get back, just do me a favor. Have a wonderful day. A glorious day. A beautiful day. A marvelous day in Christ Jesus. Unless you've already made other plans.